Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Summer's over. Single best idea. And the answer is here. It's the beginning of the new year. A million years ago, it really started Wednesday after Labor Day. And that's changed because across the nation, so many people have kids back into school before Labor Day. The whole sportsocracy of America and, you know, athletic teams and all that. But also, I think it was just a sense, particularly in the more affluent East Coast climes, of getting to September 15th, maybe September 10th. I don't know. But somewhere out there is the new year. We're committed. It's single best idea and across all of Bloomberg surveillance to give you the best conversations we can on economics, finance, and investment. We started incredibly strong today. I was surprised the interns all left. Lisa Mateo's interns left two weeks ago because she was on sabbatical. But I walk in today and there's only two or three interns left from the horde that got us through the summer. And so we had a really good set of conversations uh, out there uh, today. I thought that Linda Dissel at Federated was really quite good about figuring out the balance between value and the growthiness of the MAG-7, call it MAG-8 now with Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, Scott Clemens is the Brown Brothers Harriman with some huge multi-decade experience. We talked to Scott Clemens simply about the valuations of the market. We've been very encouraged since really the beginning of June, I guess, to see the market broaden out a little bit. So small caps have outperformed over the past two two months, three months uh, now. Uh, uh, NASDAQ hasn't necessarily led the way. That's encouraging to me. I, I get worried when the market is so top-heavy. Top-heavy, narrowly-led markets tend to be volatile. Uh, I think we saw that a little bit in early August. We had a couple of days worth of reminder of that. I don't think that's gone away. Volatility tends to accompany turning points in economic activity, turning points in monetary policy. We may be on the verge of that. So buckle up, but pay attention to the long term and to fundamentals. And what I'd pay attention to is a tape today. I'd really note Brent crude, $3 move, West Texas Intermediate. You know, by the time you listen to this, you may be under 70 a barrel, under $71 a barrel in West Texas Intermediate. Brent crude sliding down above that. But, you know, just the whole global slowdown feel. And, you know, the ISM numbers that come out the first of the month, uh, John Farrow puts a huge amount of weight on ISM. Maybe I put less weight on, but the reality is ISM manufacturing coming in below uh, survey gets your attention. And we're off to the races on this idea. OK, rates come down, but does GDP come down with it? Maybe that's a titanic battle through the week. We'll have all sorts of economic data on that. Dean Kernett, we've been trying to get into the studio since, well, August, whatever, when the market blew up. The VIX went out through the Lehman 30, out to 60-something, came right back. It was a flash crash, I guess. We talked to Dean Kern at a macro risk advisors about that. But far more importantly, away from indexes, the correlations between individual stocks, Dean Kern looked at NVIDIA and Apple. Just take NVIDIA and its correlation to Apple. It was actually running negative for a period of time. That's unheard of. To have the two largest stocks, both $3 trillion plus market caps, to be uncorrelated. If you think about the impact that that's having on overall levels of, of realized volatility of the S&P, it's significant. And why does that matter? It's because in today's day of, of investing, volatility is not just a... Uh, the statistic we watch, it's actually an input into how portfolios are sized, a mathematical input. So you lower the realized volatility and people get longer. They think they can run bigger uh, uh, levels of exposure because your value at risk is lower because vol is lower. And so one of the things, Tom, I think is a big um, you know, unknown, but something we should be really watchful for is um, a shift in the correlation. So if the MAG-7, MAG-8 starts to get more correlated to the S&P, or if these names start to become more correlated to each other, we certainly got a glimpse of that on August 5th, that's going to add a lot of volatility to the index. See, it's unfair. I mean, Dean Kern, it's on Macro Risk Advisors, and I'm supposed to wax philosophical here about what he just said is an arch quant. And the answer is my brain is still on summertime. So bear with me. Buried in that brilliant discussion of intersector 
correlation, individual stock correlation, and is a partition. This goes back to a guy named Tusha Shande at MIT years ago. There's correlation across indexes and sectors, and that's, as a general rule, very different than correlations between individual stocks. The pro Dean Kernet there talking about individual stocks, and buried in that was a global Wall Street mantra called value at risk, or VAR, V-A-R. You study value at risk, and some people believe in it. It's sort of an institutional requirement and measurement of big banks, their trading desks, their investment desks, whatever you want to call it. And the answer is you make a decision if you believe in this malarkey. And I'll tell you, I'm death on VAR. I, I really listen carefully there to Dean Kernett. But I just, I just think the, the VAR measurements is a trap for global Wall Street of the highest, highest uh, level. It just, it's just something to really watch out for. They're Dean Kernett on NVIDIA and Apple. It's real simple. We're out on YouTube. Subscribe to Bloomberg Podcasts. Also on Apple Podcasts. It's single best. Thank you.